Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about graphing radical functions, and we're going to be using our graphing calculator to help us do it. In this first one, notice I've been given a radical function. I can tell because it's got a square root in it. And first thing I'm going to do, since I am using the graphing calculator on this one, we could figure out this by hand, but it's a lot faster if we've got this resource. So the first thing you want to do is cut your calculator on and go to your y equals and we're going to type this in exactly as we see it. So 3 and then we'll do our square root. Now that's second and then that little x squared button pulls up your square root and then we'll type in x minus 2. Now notice right now I'm underneath that radical which is what I want to do because that's what I see here. But now for the negative 4 I want to jump out from underneath the radical. So you hit this little right arrow and that stops the radical and then you'll do your minus 4. So notice the only thing under the radical is the x minus 2. Now we want to look at our table of values because that's what's going to show us where our endpoint is and where our solid whole number points are. So we're going to hit second graph. This takes us to our table. Now the first thing you'll probably notice are these errors. And if you keep scrolling up, you're going to keep getting errors. So we want to find where's that line, right? So where's the final error and then that next point? Because that next point is our end point. So in this case, it's 2, negative 4. So that's going to be our end point. So now that we know our end point, we can go ahead and plot that. So 2 and then negative 4. But then we need to plot more points. So let's look at our table again. So I got the 2, negative 4. What's my next whole number point? So I've got a 3, negative 1. I can plot that. As well as 6, 2. I can easily plot that. So let me do those. And now I'm out of space. So I want to go ahead and connect these. If you notice, you can also hit graph just to see generally what this is going to look like. It's going to start here at our endpoint, and then it's going to go up and out forever. So there's actually an error there. This continues on beyond the window forever. The next thing we want to do is be able to say what is our domain and range of this radical function. So remember for domain, we read left to right. Coming from the left, the first place I hit is positive 2 on my x values, and it's a solid point, so it gets a bracket. And then when I come in from the right, I hit an arrow. So an arrow means infinity, and infinity always gets a parenthesis. To find range, remember that's our y, and we move from bottom to top. So from the bottom, the first place I hit is negative 4. And again, that's a solid point, so it gets a bracket. And when I move from the top down, the first place I hit is an arrow, and an arrow means positive infinity. For my next point, I've got a negative 2 times the square root of x plus 4. Let's bring our graphing calculator back out, and let's type that in. So negative 2 times square root of x plus 4. The x plus 4 is underneath the radical. Let's go to our second graph to be able to look at our table. Right away I don't see any errors, so let me scroll up a bit and see if I can find it. There it is. Okay, so my first point after the error is negative 4, 0. That tells me that's my end point. So I can go ahead and plot that first point at negative 4, 0. Now from there I want to plot some other points. So I also see negative 3, negative 2 right there. And let's see, there's 0, negative 4. And let's see if we can get any more. You really only need like 3, but if you can get a few more that's great. So 5, negative 6. And to do our domain, we're going to read left to right. So when I come in from the left, the first place I hit is a negative 4. It's a solid point, so it gets a bracket. And when I come in from the right, what I hit is a arrow. So an arrow means positive infinity. Now when I do my range and I come in from the bottom, the first place I hit is an arrow. So because it's on the left, this is negative infinity. 
And when I come down from the top, the first place I hit on the y-axis is zero. So zero, and it's a solid point at zero, so it gets a bracket. Let's look at one more together. So for this one, we have f of x equals one-half times the square root of negative x plus two plus three. So we want to bring out our graphing calculator and type that in to our y equals. So you could do one half or you could just do 0.5. It's a little easier. Square root of negative x plus two. Come out of the radical plus three. So let's go to our table of values. And there's my errors that showed up. So my first point after the errors would be two, three. So I wanna use that point as my end point. And we can go ahead and plot 2, 3. That would be right here. And the next point, let's look at the next whole number. So I know from looking at this that there's not a ton of whole numbers. So I'm going to instead use one that's still easy to plot. I'm going to use this 3.5. So I'm going to use 1, 3.5 because a half is pretty easy to graph. So 1 and 3 and a half. So it would be right about there. It's an estimation for this one. And then our next whole number point would be negative two, four. So negative two, four. And when I list my domain, when I come in from the left, the first place I hit is an arrow. So that means negative infinity because it's on the left, so it's negative. And when I come in from the right, I hit a solid point at positive two, so the two gets a bracket. Range, when I come in from the bottom, I hit right at positive three. It's a solid point, so it gets a bracket. And when I come from top down, I hit an arrow. So even though that arrow looks like it's going to the side, it's also moving up slowly, but it is moving up for infinity. So we'd call it positive infinity because it's on the right. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. I'll post the endpoint, the points you would want to graph, and then also the domain and range in the video description below. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.